Welcome to the video today. We're going to take a look at Rapid Composer and some of the initial settings that you can adjust to make the program maybe a little more user friendly to the way you like to work. So let's take a look at some of those settings and how they can be adjusted. So one of the first things you should do is reset how fast your tool tips open up when you hover over any button. I say that because um, they do have tips on almost every button and there are a lot of them and the faster you can see that and read it the better and um, so to do that you can go to settings and I believe it's under miscellaneous scroll down and towards the bottom here you'll see pop up help delay and I turned it to short and until I get to know the program better then um, you can turn it off. Uh, maybe you can, yeah, you can turn it off or turn it to, you know, a slower reaction. But initially, I think it's a great idea to turn that to very fast so that you can just hover over something and see a tool tip come up because there are so many different things to learn about. So one of the first things you may want to set up for your initial layout of uh, Rapid Composer is how to create parts and rename them, colorize them, zoom into them, zoom out, rearrange them, so that you can set up a song and all the different parts of a song, right? So let's see how we can do that. All right, let's rearrange our song or let's create an arrangement here and name and title so let's click on this double click the untitled and you can change that let's go song one now we have a title for our composition we can see our part that's already made called part one and it's blue line one underneath it so it's like part one version one of that part so that means that we can change the name to part one, double click on that, and we could say intro. And we'll keep it blue for now. And for line one underneath it, we can rename that to um, something like uh, idea one. So now we have our intro and we have our first idea of our, our intro. But say we want to have three or four different ideas for an intro, you could simply go down to the plus sign here and add another part. So now we have another part, and if we look at it, it's copied everything over, but it's made it just slightly lighter than the first intro idea. So let's rename uh, that. So it's kind of a nice little system where you can have your intro ideas named and shaded slightly differently. So idea one and this second one will be, of course, idea two. And it's already shaded automatically a slightly lighter. So visually you get a cue on the difference between the two. Now, if we want to delete what we just created, we would use the X button. So just I'll do it here just for example so that's deleted now but if we wanted to add it back we can add it back and I can just rename it here so that's how we would do that now if I wanted to create a verse idea one and two or three or four uh, you would do it in a similar way just make sure to just click this button and make sure that you're creating another actual part not an idea so you would go up here and you would add the plus sign add empty part and now you get a whole new part with different ideas already to go down here so you can see how that works so in this case it's already got idea one for the second part and so for the second part down here we're going to call this verse and it's already got idea one and we can go double click idea two and uh, the green color may be okay but just for the sake of demonstration we'll click on the dot here and change it to maybe uh, yellowish or uh, orange color 
anything you like. And the different ideas should be lighter versions of that. So let's click out of that and double click the bar at the bottom to zoom out of there. Now we can see we have what we want. We've got our intro with idea one, intro um, line one. And for whatever reason, I might have, have done that wrong. So let's just go up here because I want intro idea one, intro uh, idea two here. So let's go up and change it. And I'm not sure if I did that wrong or what, but we can fix it up there. So what we have is what we want. So intro idea one, intro idea two, verse idea one, and verse idea two. Now how do we zoom and rearrange and just do some kind of housekeeping with these different parts? So we're given some tools to uh, be able to rearrange these and zoom in and out of these parts. So let's just hover over one of the parts and see what the tooltip says. You can drag to rearrange the lines. You can uh, shift drag to rearrange the parts. Click drag to zoom and alt click to split. Double click to zoom in and shift double click to zoom into a part. So we have options there. So let's try shift dragging to rearrange. So if I want to bring the verse up to the front for whatever reason. Okay, I hold down shift and drag it up there. All right. Now, if we want to bring it back, shift and bring it back. And say if I, uh, let's see what the tooltip says again here. Let's click out and back in. Shift drag, control drag to zoom. Okay, so this is a good one. So if I hold down control, you may be wondering like if you have a lot of different parts and it goes beyond this part of your interface how do you zoom in and zoom out so that was the question i had so go onto your lines here hold down control and just slide hold down your left mouse button while you're sliding on that bar and it allows you to zoom in and out really nicely so that's handy uh all right so let's see Click and drag to zoom, and that's what we just did. I'll click to split and join lines. Interesting. Let's all click, see what happens. I see, so that just divides that up like that. Very good. And what else may we want to do? Uh, double click to zoom into a line. Okay. All right, that works good. And then if you, I presume if you want to go back, Let's try double clicking with Alt. That cuts it. Double clicking brings it all back. And it's cut there and cut there. So, and then if we want to again rearrange things, I believe it was the Shift key. So, if we want to bring the verse up here again. All right, so some nice tools to create parts and different versions of those parts. Rename them, recolor them, zoom in and out of them and uh, so that's working good let's now move on to something else and before i forget it may be obvious but um, there you know some of you may miss this little button but up here you have the uh, undo and redo and with a little history behind it so if we want to redo what we just did or we want to undo what we just did don't forget to use these buttons they come in very handy because you'll be experimenting and you may wish to go back in time or forward in time. So these are the buttons for that. Now let's talk about the grid and how you can uh, set that up to be very clear and snap to, you know, how you want things to snap to. Um, initially it was set up at 16, the interface, and I just wanted something a little less cluttered. So if we double click on here and we zoom in, at 16, you, it's divided, each bar is divided into 16, obviously, and the snap. So just like any DAW, you have these tools. I set my initial now to be at 1.8, uh, just to keep everything nice and clean. That's the way I like it in uh, Cubase. If we zoom out, and let's try that again. Okay, over there. If this zoom bar doesn't work when you zoom into uh, one of your sections, and just re-click on it. So let's try that again. And that's how you do that. 
So setting the snap and the grid is important because you may have small notes and you're wondering why you can't move one when you're in editing view up here or note editing view. If you ever wonder why you can't move a note or it shifts over too far and it's not moving the way you think you want it to move or it should move, um, it's because your snap setting isn't the right size for the size of your note that you want to move. So that's the snap and grid. You can change it how you like. Next thing to talk about is the looper. You may wonder if you can loop different sections with this program, and you absolutely can. It's kind of hidden here on this line over here. So if you just take your mouse, left click and drag, you can see the loop bar. And it's very versatile. You can just go up here and click and drag and say you want to loop uh, this section here. And now when the playhead moves over into this region, and then bounces back, that will start the loop. So you can create loops wherever you need them inside of your song section. And you'll probably see it'll snap easier. So if I put it to quarter bar snap, it'll probably snap. Yeah, it snaps quite conveniently. And so if you have this set to a really, you know, high resolution here of 32, um, you may find it hard to just set your looper exactly where you want it but if you want to just uh, have your looper snap in set it to like quarter notes or full bar so set it to a bar and it'll just every time you do the looper it just go by bar chunks so that's that so a couple more things about the um, chord track and what you can do uh, if you don't know you can obviously just tuck it up so if you're running out of space or you can make it a lot bigger, easier to see. Um, but initially I had this, if you right click on that, initially it's set to universal and you may want that, may not, but I have mine set to, as I stated before, note names. But uh, maybe even more interesting is the fact that you can go to the hamburger button here and you can change it from tonality to distance from tonal center. And for me, that's going to be more helpful because now um, it shows you when, you know, maybe there's a chord that isn't going to match up with your major uh, scale or whatnot. So now these have a color coding that will help you stick to your tonal center. Just wanted to mention that. Another thing you may want to set up is when you have some tracks here, and let's just double click on my chords track, zoom into it. You can see the piano roll here, or the keys, they're only named by octave uh, for the C3, C4, and whatnot. If you wanted all the names of all the keys here, if you're not familiar with that, and sometimes that comes in very handy, just go to this, uh, again, the hamburger button and turn on show note names on the keyboard. So click that on, and now you have all the names of the notes and you can do your editing that way also. If you wanna change the colors of your tracks also, you can do that quite easily. So let's just double click again on chords. And you see the yellow bar here. If you uh, right click on it, uh, you get the track properties. Just make sure if you if it's set to this, you might see this. So go up here and make sure it's set to this button there. And of course there, you can just set the color again the way you want. So now it's purple, now it's back to yellow, and that's how you change the colors of your tracks. Setting up some initial tracks so that you don't have to do it every time you open uh, Rapid Composer. And so I have five tracks that I'm just starting out with. And um, so it helps me to just get rolling with the composition. So I decided to create a chord track, bass, drums, melody, and rhythm, have them named. And um, the idea behind this is if I open it up here, so if I double click, um, you can, you know, if you find that the initial sounds of your sound fonts are too loud, you can change the expression of that or how loud it initially is going to sound or you can also go up uh, to your uh, rapid composer track up here and I've turned down the overall volume because I find the sound fonts are quite loud when I first open it up 
So you want your, you know, this entire interface to work for you, not against you. So I just adjusted the sounds. And that way, when I start working, those, the sound fonts aren't just blaring too loud and adjust the expression. Also, every track is set up on the channel that I like. And so since I'm using VSTs mainly with this different VST instruments, set your instrument um, uh, selector here to MIDI plugin host. Uh, initially, it might be on something like General User or one of these other two. But if you're using uh, this as a plugin inside a DAW and you want to use VST instruments, set it to Plugin Host, which I have set up here. And for your first channel, your first track set up that way, set it to or leave it at Channel 1, which it is here. And then for the second one, so this is the second one now, the bass. It's also set up to plug in host, but you see that it's channel 17. That's because if we look up here, these are all outputs or inputs to your VST instruments that um, really you have to have the channel set to 17. So the first one is 1 to 16, second one is 17 to 32, 33 to 48, and 40. You can get the idea here. So you're always moving up by 16 MIDI channels plus one. So for my bass, that's why I have it set to channel 17 up here, because that's then the next actual channel that can go out to a VST instrument. So if you're wondering why you have, you know, this set up to different channels on your instruments, but it's not working, it's because for every track here, you have to go up 16 plus one. So set it to that. And you'll notice on my drums, now I have it to channel 33. And then the melody track, you'll see it's 49 here. And same with the rhythm track, is the next one up from there, if I click right on it there. Now it's 65. And that just corresponds, again, to these numbers here. And um, you could go all the way to 6, 7, and 8. You could have 8 tracks of uh, VST instruments. But you could also add another, a whole bunch of more tracks and set their, if we just do this correctly here, set their uh, instrument back to general uh, MIDI fonts or the sound fonts that you have on your system. So um, what I'm saying is you can have tracks that will connect to your VST instruments and then you can make a whole bunch of more tracks that connect to sound fonts that are on your uh, a different system or built into your operating system, right? So you can have a lot of tracks and do a lot of work. And remember, you're, you're going to be dragging MIDI in and out. So uh, for me, I just want enough uh, VST instruments so that I can have a composition going. And then I may move some of those ideas back into the DAW or what have you. So that's why I have these set up the way they are. Now you may run into this issue when you're navigating your system here. So if I go to the chord track again and just say I uh, zoom it out a little bit here. And you may notice that your piano keyboard here is too small for you to see. How can you zoom into that and navigate that? So uh, again, if you hover over it, you get some pop-up tips. And so simply just hit your control button, hold down control and your left mouse. And just you can zoom in so you can see all the names of your notes and do your editing quite easily. And you can zoom in out. So you're holding down control and you're dragging with your left mouse button to do that. Another thing you may want to adjust as you're setting up the system to work better for you. Um, if you notice when you drag in any phrase from a generator or anywhere really, so let's just drag in something from the chord generator. Now we have a phrase here and anytime I select this phrase for editing, it plays through the entire thing until I click off in the gray area. So you can, every time you select it, it plays. If you want it to stop, click off in the gray area. But that can be annoying sometimes when you don't, you're selecting something and you don't necessarily want to edit. So um, 
if we go up here to this tab up here, Preview, and if we uh, open that up, we can see that we can turn it on or off, but we can check or uncheck the Preview Phrase for Selection button. If you turn that off, then you won't always, every time you select, you won't have it play through the entire thing. So that way I can select it and I can left or right click on it. Then I can go to variations or the generator and do whatever I need to do, but I don't hear it always playing through. There are times when you do want it to always play through and you can make the adjustments up in this tab. But this way, if that's annoying you, you can just change the way that works. So the last thing I'm going to talk about in this particular setup video is um, how do you turn on those experimental features? And so if you go to your settings and go to miscellaneous, scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can just check these all on. And uh, if I have them currently all checked on, so I do have the odd crash. Um, I'm not sure if that's what's causing some of these little crashes but it's not to a point where it's affecting my workflow. So I've chosen to turn them all on. And because they enable some really cool features, and one of them is the ability to just freehand write in notes. So if I hold down Alt on my keyboard and take my little mouse here, I can draw in freehand any uh, type of notes in a flow that may work for a melody or whatever you need. And if you hold down control, you can do line notes like that, which could be very handy for doing little harp, um, moving your harp notes quickly up and down. And uh, I'm sure you can find a lot of different things you could do with that. Also, it enables the Markov Melody Generator and a few other things that are really kind of neat ideas. Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, We'll be coming up with other videos showing um, the actual sound, how this sounds, and how it create. you know, when you create a phrase with this program and hook it up to your VSTIs, how they sound. And if you drag in a, a phrase from another product, such as Easy Keys or Easy Bass, how does it actually sound when you start to manipulate it with the tools inside of Rapid Composer? So stay tuned for more, and we'll see you on the next video.